Good morning, YouTube. It is today's project guide back here again. And here is our beautiful, freshly washed GSX with the crummy wheels that have to be replaced. But that is not the topic of today's video. If you guys have been following the channel, we did mention, well, I mentioned, not we, I mentioned that we are going to put some other videos up with some other cars. So today we have our first one. It is a 2004 Volvo S60 2.5 turbo all-wheel drive and this gentleman brought it over here it has a plethora of issues it's kind of beat up but still runs pretty good uh, it needs quite the list of parts uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I got right now all right guys so we're here with the Volvo uh, it's got a couple of problems uh, we do have leaking tires on this thing so I gotta send them out I don't have any means of de-beating and re-beating tires but he's got the driver's front, passenger front, and the passenger rear tire are all bleeding air. Um, let's get up here under the hood. Here she is, 2.5, five cylinder, turbocharged engine. Uh, what happened was he was driving it down the road and I believe they hit a little bump and then felt some, some shutter up in the front end and his driver's side front axle dropped out. So that's gotta get replaced. We also found, upon further inspection, that this motor mount is completely gone. So this has to get changed. We're not gonna do that today, we got one on order, but the parts we are going to change are in this happy box right here. Completely blown front struts, so we've got two brand new quick struts from, I believe they're called Unity, Unity Strut Assemblies. Uh, We've got a set of front brake pads from Bosch. We also have our new CV axle. When it comes with the bolt to lock it into the hub right here, which there's a nice little plug in. That's a Duralast part, the usual suspects. And we also have ball joints, lower ball joints. And there's the part number. If any of you guys are doing this on your 04 S60, and those two bolts right there go into the ball joint bottoms, I believe. Or no, they're part of the mounting hardware to the, uh, the knuckle, which I learned that these steering knuckles for the front end are made out of aluminum, so you gotta be a little careful when you're taking them out. They're not normal cast iron or steel like you find in most vehicles. So anyway, we are gonna get cracking. We're gonna start by getting this thing up in the air. We're gonna take out the old struts. We're gonna take out the uh, CV shaft has to be punched out on the passenger side so we can get to the lower ball joint, put that in. Uh, we're just going to start tearing at it. And in this video I'm not going to give you as much of a breakdown as I would if it were on the uh, pretty old DSM over here. But I'll show you what I'm doing, give you some pointers, and show you how I get this job done. So let's get after it. So we got her up in the air on some jack stands right now. So we're going to take off both front wheels. Uh, already cracked the lug nuts free. And this one actually was the tightest set of lugs I have ever cracked free, ever. They barely came out. Uh, the snap when they broke free would just yeah, stung your hands, they were on there so tight. And that's an oddball wheel. This side, however, no, this is the oddball wheel. This wheel right here, compared to the back one, is different. He actually uh, had a hole in his tire and the local Mavis took them three times to figure out that he had a hole in the rubber. They sent him over to a a scrap yard to buy a new wheel because they said his wheel was leaking and he ended up paying for a new wheel that he didn't need because they couldn't find a friggin hole in the tire whatever squirt bottle and soap people always remember that bubbles will find the hole but yeah we're gonna rip these wheels off and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like underneath this side all right so we're over here on the passenger side uh, this side doesn't look very bad I just put new tie rod ends, inners and outers on this thing uh, sometime last summer. Uh, they were very easy to swap on this vehicle, just a little bit of heat and they cracked right free. But uh, we're gonna get down here and do that ball joint right there. And as you can see, this side has an axle in it. Everything looks nice. It's not wiggling. Rotors are a little worse for wear. They definitely have some pretty deep grooves in them, holy hell. See if I can get you a shot of that. I mean, you can see that's clearly two millimeters in. <laughs> yeah, these things have seen some hell. Definitely need to replace these soon. 
But uh, yeah, the pads, there's still a little bit of pad left on the outside. And in the window here, you can see the inside's got a lot of life too. We're just gonna take and put them in the bin and get the new ones on there. But let's go over here and take a look at the pad, or the driver's side now. And this is the side that has the major issue. The axle jumped out. So there's the uh, place for the shaft to go into the transmission there. And it just goes straight into the hub, so half of the work is already done for me. As you can see, relatively a straight shot. This rotor is just as bad as the other one. It's rusted up, it's really, really grooved pretty deeply. Uh, well, we're gonna do what we're getting paid to do. And we're gonna take this shock and strut, or spring and strut out. All the rubber's peeling off of it. This thing has seen some shit. So, she's coming out, she's gonna go into the bin, and we're gonna put our fresh ones in. So, that's going to require, I think the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect this strut, we're gonna get it out of here. We're gonna take this bolt here, and the one below it out, and that should free it up down below. We also have to, I believe there's a brake bracket on the back of this. Yeah, it's bolted onto the strut tower in the back here, the brake line is, so, I believe. So we're gonna take a look and pull that off, it's probably 10 mil or something. And then we're gonna take out these three bolts. One, two, and three. And that should release the strut. Well, the strut's out, that's gonna give this hub a lot of free uh, motion, so we're gonna be able to get to the lower ball joint and pop that puppy out. So we're gonna break all the nuts free on the lower ball joint first, and once we get those freed up, we're gonna start taking the strut out. So to get this ball joint off, you have to unscrew the bolt on the bottom here, which is this weird, uh, it's like a cap nut. It applies pressure to the bottom of the ball joint so it can tighten it to the knuckle without actually damaging the aluminum uh, steering knuckle itself. Uh, this is a pain right in the butt to take off. What I ended up having to do, it was a, what size were you? It's a 3 16 Allen in the center of this shaft here. And you have to stick that inside. And once you get that inside, you crack this nut free with an 18 millimeter. And this one was all boogered up on the end where the uh, Allen went in, so I had to use a, uh, what is it, 40 grip flap disc to grind off all the boogering. <laughs> but yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the shot. It's already separated down there a little bit. The cover came off of it. I think when the uh, joint snapped, it put too much stress on the lower ball joint and messed it up pretty good. So we're gonna take this thing off the rest of the way. Next is pulling out the uh, two 14 mils that hold the actual ball joint up on either side. And then we should be able to separate it from the uh, knuckle. So we're gonna get after that now. Okay, so we got this thing up. We got the bottom ball joint bolts out, two 14 mils. That's ready to be separated down below and we're starting work on the strut. Uh, there is a bracket near the strut on the back here that holds the brake line, but I don't think it's actually attached. I haven't looked back there yet. Um, I don't know, is it? I don't think, no it's not. All right, so we're right here at the uh, upper sway bar link connection. Uh, it's a T40 goes in the center and you use an 18 mil on a breaker bar socket to crack that free and then you put your T40 in there and you use an 18 mil box end wrench to unscrew this and after a couple of minutes of fighting with her she should come right out. Let's see are we lucky are we lucky? Oh we're lucky. And then once that's out you push her back out of the way and you stick your happy bolt back on it because we're going to obviously be reusing our sway bar link. Alright, so now all this stuff's loosened up. I cracked these uh, bolts down here free for the strut. There's two of them. One above, one below. And that should free up our strut assembly. I'm going to tap them with a hammer to get them out the back side with the nut threaded all the way down on the bolt so we don't bust the threads up. And we're also going to come up here and take out all of our bolts up top side. So. I'm gonna get on that real quick and I'll show you the end result. All right guys, so I've got this propped up on a, uh, a fork right now. Uh, we got three of the four bolts pulled out of the upper strut tower. Uh, I took the caliper off 
with a where'd you go? I need the T45. Yep, T45. All right, yeah. Sun is out in full force. Can't really see what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, anyway, took the caliper off, laid that back here on the control arm. Uh, straight down in here, you're gonna find a 10 millimeter, and that is the wheel speed sensor right here that wraps around the outside of the strut, as you can see. So I took that out. I'm gonna put the 10 millimeter bolt back in it, and now we have a freed up hub. So what we're gonna do next is separate the hub from the lower ball joint, then we are going to press fit the new ball joint in, or lightly tap it in with a hammer, however one you want to put press fit. And uh, from there we're going to drop our strut out. We have one last bolt holding it hanging. Once that's out of the way, we're going to start, like I said, putting the, uh, well, hammering out the uh, old ball joint, hammering the new one in after we clean up the hole, and we're going to start putting all this back together. So with everything disconnected, except for the tie rod end, uh, Right behind the back side, you can see there's, from the previous job, looks like somebody really notched the hell out of these. As you can see, there's a, a lip right here that sticks down. I'm gonna shave that down with the, the uh, flap disc, make it nice and flush again. That might have been part of the failure point with the ball joint. Um, and then right here is our old ball joint. It's about ready to pop out, so I'm just gonna stick this, uh, this uh, little pickle fork in there and knock her right out and then we're gonna start putting our new one on and uh, yeah I'll see you guys in a minute here I'll get some of this knocked out and show you what it looks like once we get it all put back together so forgive the mess but uh took a drill oh god with a little wire wheel attachment on it you can see that I don't know it's crappy out hard to see well it's not crappy it's just bright out I cleaned the inside of the uh, little seat where the ball joint goes I cleaned inside down here and made this bottom mating surface flush again with my uh, flap disc over there. Uh, let's see, let me get a good angle for you guys. Let's see all these goodies. Here is the old ball joint, and I don't know, you can't really tell in the video, but yeah, she's loosey goosey as hell. She's seen some miles. It's very, very floppy. So that's the old one, she's gone. Here are the, oh, stay. That's the inner pad, and I thought there was life left on it because I was seeing the uh, back plate. But yeah, these are completely toast. You can see the groove inside of that from how bad the rotor is. Um, the outside pad, she wasn't that bad. She was worn down a little bit, but she still had some life in her. No real crazy grooves other than on the top edge here, but I think it shaved itself down. This is the old strut assembly. So what we're gonna do is grab our new one and start putting this whole rigmarole back together. I wanted to show you something that I did right now. Uh, because this is aluminum, the knuckles are, you gotta be kind of careful with them, you don't wanna hurt them. Uh, what I did was I showed you, I cleaned out the holes where they mount, I cleaned out the hole here, put a little PB blaster or whatever lube you got on it, on the actual part with the knurls on it that goes in and locks into the hub. And I started the bolts first with this thing just hanging and flopping around. And I got them just, you know, evenly tight on either side. Then I took my hammer and a punch, and I lightly tapped it into place on this, this side, this side, moved it in the back corner, and then just moved it around until it started to go in. Each time tapping it a couple of taps, then tightening it a couple of turns, because I didn't want to just drive it home and rip the threads out of this piece of aluminum. As we all know, aluminum is soft. So, uh, that thing went in there nice and flush. It cleaned up all those little lips from the previous job whoever did that and knocked them all all dented in and had those humps right there and she's sitting flush now there's a very tiny little gap right here but that's as tight as I can get this thing in there I don't want to torque it anymore and risk hurting it it's in there snug so now we're gonna take this nut off we're gonna line it back up set it up here and start tightening that and putting the new strut and the axle in it's gonna be fun all right guys so we've got our new axle in we've got Actually, there's a, a ring, a lock ring, like on most axles. You really got to give it a good shove into the transmission. And you'll hear it snap right into place. It'll make a nice little click. Uh, after that, we set the post for the new ball joint down through the bottom in the back here, right down yonder way, and put the bolt on it just finger tight for now. Uh, then we've put our new strut in from the top, and we are getting ready to connect the two bolts here 
and I usually just get them close and then use a screwdriver through one of them to get them lined up as best I can. And we're going to start tightening everything back up. We've got to put our sway bar link back on right here. We have to put our wheel speed sensor back down in where the 10 mil is. And then we're going to put our new pads on, get everything thrown back together and crank that lower ball joint tight. And we're going to move on to the other side. So we got the new ball joint cranked in and it's actually not an 18 mil in a T whatever the last one was. It's now a bigger size. It's a T40 that fits on the inside of it. I think that's what I said before. Maybe I didn't, that didn't change, but regardless, uh, it's not a 18 mil, it is a bigger 7 8 So you gotta remember that for down here. And I used a jack after I got the axle in and got this nut tightened, which is a 12 mil. Uh, I got the bottom bolt and the strut first on this side, and then I jacked it up and got the top bolt to basically just swung into place and clamped through so I could stick it in there. Uh, now we got the new brake pads in, which I'm sure you know how to swap brake pads if you're watching my video. Uh, easy enough to compress it with a C-clamp or you can screwdriver it and compress the piston before you take the thing off. Uh, these are all brand new now. Nice fat chunks of meat on there. <laughs> we got the new neighbors moving in right now. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is to, I use the jack also to do this, to line up the sway bar link right here. So I'm gonna put that back in. And then around the outside of that, I have to attach the uh, wheel speed sensor right down here with a 10 mil. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna throw the wheel back on it and we are ready to rock. Okay guys, so we've got our new strut cranked in nice and tight. We got our sway bar link reattached. We got our brake caliper with a new set of pads put back together. Our new axle is in. Everything is tightened down. The ball joints cranked nice and tight. Our wheel speed sensor is in. And that is it for the driver's side. Now the passenger side just needs the strut and the ball joint and the pads. And I don't think you guys need to see how to do this twice. It's the same exact procedure on the other side minus the axle bit. I still may pull the axle out, pull that 14 or what is it, 12 millimeter out of the center of the hub and slide the axle out when I do the other side. It just makes it easier to get the ball joint out and reinstall the new one and then you can clean all the components out. So remember that tip. Uh, that's it for today guys. So make sure to like the video down below, subscribe if you want to continue to see more content. We're going to have some more different vehicles and of course your favorite DSM content coming back at you soon. And uh, until next time guys take care keep them hands clean and uh we'll see you on the other side of today's project guys thanks for watching guys